This is a fallout shelter. It's also a root cellar. It's the sort of thing that a lot of people in Hawaii had wished that they had when there was that nuclear weapons scare a couple years ago. It's also the sort of thing that a lot of people in the rest of the world might wish that they had in the near future. In this video, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna talk about all the things that you would wanna have inside a fallout shelter if you build one. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wait Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Okay, so here we are inside the fallout shelter. This shelter is about eight feet wide by 14 feet long. We're underground by, with about two or three feet of dirt and concrete above us. And I'm sure what you're looking at right now are these racks. And this is where we have a lot of the supplies and food that we have in here. We're gonna be talking about all this stuff in this video. But before we even get to that, I wanna talk about some of the critical systems and tools that are really important to have in a fallout shelter. Because if you don't have these things, this life-saving situation, this life-saving device could turn from that into your tomb. Let's check it out. This area that we're in right here is the sleeping and living quarters. You can see that we have some bunk beds here. At the moment, they're being used as storage shelves uh, because I try to get double use out of everything that I create. But these are bunk beds and each of them has its own bedroll. We have uh, blankets and bedding up in this bin here. And the rest is primarily covered uh, in jugs of water. These are chlorine treated water jugs. Uh, if you want to store water ahead of time, if you're using municipal water, you can store a municipal water in jugs that you've prepared yourself by cleaning them out and it'll last up to like a year or so without any extra treatment because there's chlorine in the water that is uh, added by the town uh, before your point of use. Uh, if you are getting your water from a well or something like that you can add your own bleach to it. Now we do have water that's plumbed into this uh, structure here. Uh, we have uh, pressurized water that comes in here, but there are all sorts of circumstances where that uh, water pressure may not work. If there was an electromagnetic pulse and it knocks out power, or if there's a, a wildfire, or just, you know, really bad luck. You know, could be that, that could be the day where the, you know, the well stops working and you don't want to be coming into your fallout shelter and suddenly realize you don't have access to any water because then again, it's going to turn, like we mentioned, from your life-saving raft to your to your tomb. So uh, water is something that's really critical. A place to sleep, a place to relax is really critical. And also, <sighs> Air. Air is even more important than water. Water is critically important. You're not going to survive for a couple of weeks in a fallout shelter without water, but you're not even going to survive for a couple of minutes without air. What we have for an uh, air intake is this uh, vent right down here. We've got a little uh, cover on it at the moment, but this is a four inch intake fan that I can run from in here. It uses a battery bank that is uh, located right within the fallout shelter so we can you know, do maintenance or repairs on that uh, battery bank. Uh, it also can run off of the power coming from our house. Uh, so we have house power coming in here. We have the battery bank that's in here, which is powered from a, a completely uh, separate and redundant solar electric system. But again, like we mentioned with the, the water, you know, there could be an electromagnetic pulse that knocks it out. It could just be really bad luck. Who knows what could happen? You always want to have extra backups for the really important things. Like for, for things like baked beans, you know, you could live for a couple of weeks without baked beans. It's not going to be like my kingdom for a can of baked beans if you've got a lot of other options. But there's just, there's no uh, substitute for water and there's no substitute for air. You absolutely need both of those. So you want to have a lot of redundancy when it comes to those types of things. And one redundancy we have for air is this manual bellows. Now we can connect this to the wall down here and this will uh, tie right into the same air intake system that uses the electric fan. So if the electric fan's not working, if we don't have electricity uh, through either of our systems or the fan breaks or any number of other things uh, could potentially happen, we've always got this. If there's someone alive in the shelter, somebody can, uh, uh, can use this device here and it's just a big bellows that I made myself that blows air at a, a really uh, 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 large volumes. For, for every single stroke here, you get a really large volume of air. It's a little bit easier to use this when it's strapped to the wall. Uh, and 
you can uh, get plenty of air in this uh, shelter using that device. I've got a playlist about how to make one of those. Here's a link to it if you want to check that out. It's essentially just a box with a couple of air uh, check valves, like the kind that you use for like uh, exhaust air from your bathroom. And, uh, and that big uh, bellows was uh, one of those uh, accordion kind of outdoor trash bags that I used. And that would certainly be fine for a couple of weeks. But again, we've got things like duct tape and glue. So if there's ever a, you know, a tear or a rip, we can repair it while we're in here. So that covers places to sleep. That covers water. That covers air coming in. We talked a little bit about electricity. And another thing that's kind of important uh, when you're in an environment like this is having access to information. Because if you were to come into a fallout shelter, uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of confusion about like whether it's the right thing to do. Do we need to go in there? Or is this overkill? You know, what's actually going on? Once you get in there, you'd wanna have some way of finding out whether you know, you can leave. Maybe the whole thing was just a false alarm. You don't want to be like in here for two weeks and then you emerge and go over to your neighbor, uh, you know, later that day. And you're like, wow, man, you know, how did you survive? And they're like, what are you talking about? That was like false alarm. You could have come out like two weeks prior or even worse, you're in there for two weeks. You finally emerge after going through all of your, uh, you know, your supplies. And then like, that's the minute that the bombs drop. So it's good to have an access to information. So you kind of can know what's going on above ground. We've got a little bit of that in terms of light too. We've got light tubes that come into the structure so we can at least tell whether it's day or night outside. You know, if uh, you know, we don't have clocks or our, our watches aren't working or, or whatever. And just the, it's kind of nice psychologically to have, uh, you know, some sunlight coming in, even if it's just a little. Uh, but in terms of getting more detailed information, we also have radio access. We have some radio ports up here on the wall. Uh, one is for a shortwave radio antenna that runs off through the woods, and the other is for an AM FM antenna. We have a radio, which is in this Faraday bucket right here to try to protect it. And this is kept in here. So it's sheltered underground in the fallout shelter and in a Faraday bucket uh, to try to you know, maximize the chances that it's not going to be damaged. And in addition to that, we have two radios in there and one of them is in a Faraday bag inside there. So again, for things that are important, you want to have redundancy on top of redundancy uh, you know, for, for things of that nature. So that gives you access to information. So you know whether or not it was a mistake to come in, whether it's safe to go out, you have a place to hang out, a place to sleep. We have some uh, chairs set up here and uh, right in front of the wall in this area, there's a fold down table. So you can have your, your uh, you know, place to you know, sketch or draw or write or you know, use a computer, play a game uh, or uh, you know, whatever you might wanna do while you're at a table. It's important to have uh, a variety of uh, sort of positions that you can be in. So you're not like just laying down for two weeks straight or standing up. God forbid, for two weeks straight or sitting down for two weeks straight. The ability to kind of get up, move around, stretch and uh, can you know, go a long way to help uh, protect people's sanity. So those are all kind of the basic systems that are really important for being in here. Electric system with redundancy, water system with redundancy, air system absolutely with redundancy, some sort of information uh, a gathering device that uh, is reliable. Uh, with, again, with redundancy, we actually have internet that can come in here. So we can you know, go online if that stuff is still working, who knows whether that would or not, but it's just, it was easy to throw in a coaxial cable line in here. So if it happens to be working, we can use that. And if in failing that, we have multiple ways of getting radio signals in here. And for the rest of the video, I wanna talk about a lot of our supplies, which are over on this side. All right, and here is that table that I mentioned, uh, which can take a fair bit of weight. It's held up with these chains here, so it can fold uh, right back up against the wall, keep it out of the way when we're not using it. I'm gonna be using this for pulling out some things as I kind of go through them. Now, I'm not gonna pull everything out, like this, uh, can a uh, box full of uh, baked bean uh, jars, for example. I don't think you need to have that out. You can imagine what a jar or a can of baked beans might look like. But some of this stuff is a little bit more unusual. Some of this stuff is obvious and other things maybe you might not have thought of. So as we go through it, it'll probably be kind of a mixture of both. We've got a lot of uh, canned fruits. That is something that I think is really important, getting vitamin C into you, uh, you know, just for uh, morale, having something kind of sweet and sour. We've got a lot of rice and noodles that we can make. And we're going to talk about some of the kitchen devices that we have in here in a little bit as well. We also have like dehydrated vegetables. We have bouillon. In addition to that, uh, we've got some cans of peaches here. These are more honorarily here from the, I, I love the, the book, The Road, Cormac McCarthy's book, The Road. If you've read that book, you know that there was a special place uh, in the character's heart for uh, canned peaches. Uh, so I think any any fallout shelter, any kind of emergency bunker needs to have some canned peaches in them. They're not actually my favorite, but I made sure that they were in here uh, as well. We've got some peanut butter. We've got some pista uh, pistachio nuts, some pretzels. Uh, here's something that we picked up uh, 
Halloween a few years ago is just candy. And this is something, you know, there's some energy in here in form of calories, but it's, you know, it's just a psychological pick me up. You know, that you could have, we have 140 pieces in here. We got another bag that has 140 pieces. You know, we could do the math on that for how many people are in here for two weeks and be kind of like a ration. And, you know, everybody could have that as like a little thing to look forward to each day. We've got granola bars in here. We have uh, some dried fruit like mangoes. You know, you don't want to force your family to just live on uh, rice and beans for two weeks. That would be a, a bad situation. We've got a pasta sauce and pasta that we can cook. We have a lot of sodas and the sodas that we have in particular, uh, you know, our family doesn't really drink soda. It's not like a big thing. It's like maybe uh, I'll have like one or two per year uh, is kind of kind of my rate. But we do have a lot of uh, ginger ale in here. And the reason we have ginger ale, in addition to the fact that it's, you know, just kind of like a treat sort of thing, uh, is that it can really help a lot with nausea. And if anyone is in your shelter that maybe had some radiation exposure and they're feeling the symptoms of nausea, having some ginger in the shelter, and actually we also have some crystallized ginger in here somewhere, um, having some uh, something with some ginger in the shelter can help to treat those nausea symptoms. And if you've never used ginger ale or uh, can, uh, uh, crystallized ginger, candy ginger, for nausea treatment, uh, give it a try. You'll be shocked at how uh, how potent it really is. It has the immediacy of something that you would think would be like like a hard drug, <laughs> you know, something that you have to you know get like a prescription for. It, it's really uh, effective at, at really stomping down nausea. So having some ginger ale in here was something that was important to us. We also have a protein powder in here. We have some Gatorade for mixing up, you know, for nutrition. And also, it's a little bit of a treat. We have some sprouting seeds. Uh, I have some seed sprouting trays and that's something you don't need sun for so you can do that underground and that gives you a constant supply of fresh vegetables down in the environment you got to make sure you don't get into any mold with those you'd really have to make sure you cycle through those you don't want to be bringing mold spores into an environment like this but it can give you some fresh uh, fresh vegetables which could be a real treat we've got some cereal we've got some granola up here as well and that is uh, the majority of the food that we have that I just kind of listed through there it's not a huge variety but I think it's variety enough for a couple of weeks so that people aren't going to go insane on the next shelf over we actually do have a little bit more food. We've got some cheese macaroni, I'm noticing, and that's something that my boy enjoys. Uh, and at the bottom, we've got some juice packs, uh, a little bit more Gatorade, some chocolate milk, and some uh, some other milk that's in these, um, well, I'll pull one of them up, in these little Tetra packs. These kind of things, you can have milk in these uh, boxes. And also those, those larger ones, uh, let me see if I can get some of those out of here. We've got these kind of things. These are uh, almond milk. Uh, containers. These are in Tetra packs. These have an enormously long shelf life and they don't have to be refrigerated. So that's why we leave these uh, down in here. And uh, you know, those are going to be good for years and years, even at, uh, even past expiration date. I routinely will use that stuff well past expiration date. Other things we have on the shelf, and I'm, now I'm actually going to start pulling things out here. Um, let's see. We've got some cooking uh, pots here, just camping cooking materials. Here, this is just like a regular mess kit that you might have uh, for a, a camping trip, not a backpacking trip, but like a car camping trip. So we've got this, and this gets paired with our, our kitchen bin, which I will pull out. Right here is our kitchen bin. We've got a lot of different things in here. One thing right on the top, which is important, if you ever have a fire, this is a fire extinguisher. It's like a, uh, like a can of spray paint, except uh, it has fire. Uh, extinguishing material. Now in an enclosed space, this would not be my favorite, uh, you know, ideal uh, idea to like start spraying this thing off. But if the alternative is, you know, burning up alive, you know, in, in small doses, this could be a real lifesaver. We also have uh, some bowls and cups and plates in here. We've got a, uh, a pot that we can cook with in addition to all the other pots that we had. Uh, a little scrub brush for cleaning things because that's important. You need to be able to clean stuff. And we have some of these uh, these hot plates. These things right here. <laughs> uh, some of these hot plates for cooking. Now, why do I have two of them? Is it because I want to like be cooking like a you know a huge spread dinner? I want multiple pots at the same time going. No, it's because I think this would be a pretty important thing. You know, for doing rice or pasta or baked beans or anything to make anything warm, you're gonna want to have a functional one of these. And if one of these goes down, I want to have a backup of the, you know of that so that uh, you know that's something that we wouldn't have to do without. Again, for the important things, you want to have lots of lots of redundancy. We also have. Um, you know, some silverware in here. There's like a ladle for serving and spoons and forks, things of that nature. You can never have just too many random bags. These actually are bags that our, uh, our chairs came in. And I kept them for, you know, these would be good for trash. 
or whatever at the moment they're just kind of packing material but bags are they're a first world luxury that i think uh, if you lived in a world without bags a lot of people would miss those pretty quickly all right so let's get this put away the next thing that i want to bring out is uh, a uh, bin that has a lot of things related to, you know, I mentioned if someone had radiation sickness, you know, we have the ginger for them. There's other things that you can uh, use in that situation as well. And, and these are some of those. This is gonna be uh, testing the weight carrying capacity of this shelf. Should be pretty good, there's four chains across it. Forget to put the sponge away. I'm gonna do that now before I forget. And we're gonna go in here. Now, uh, everything that I learned uh, in here pretty much was all from Hoople's Cats channel. Uh, Hoople's Cats did a video, I'm sorry, not Hoople's Cats, Hoople's Cat, did a video several years ago, uh, I think it was several years ago, about uh, different medicines you can take if you have radiation exposure. He did a lot of research, he's a, um, a, a past nurse, he knows his stuff and he has a really good channel, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Here's a link to his channel, if I, I'm not sure that I'll be able to find the exact video, but uh, he has a video on there where he goes through all this stuff. This is where I learned all of uh, this material. I printed off information on treatment. Uh, I, think, I believe that uh, he provided uh, a link to this and it talks about uh, you know different symptoms and different amounts of different medicines. This is really, really critical because just buying the medicine but not knowing what to do with it, uh, you know, it's not gonna get you too far. Um, well, it could get you really too far, but in the wrong direction, in the bad direction. So uh, I'm going to kind of lightly go through a lot of this because a lot of this stuff I've not committed to memory. A lot of it's on the sheet and uh, Hoople's cat uh, does a much better job of going through it himself, but I'm just going to kind of, uh, you know, fly over it, uh, you know, 40,000 foot view. The one big thing that we have that everybody always uh, associates with a radiation emergency is potassium iodine capsules, KI capsules. Uh, these we have, uh, you know, for everyone in our family, you know, half do doses for, you know, the kid, the whole doses for the adults. We also have, uh, what's it called, Ludol solution? It's like an iodine solution. Uh, that's kind of a second tier, just in case kind of thing. Um, we also have, uh, what is this, Prussian blue. And again, I'm not gonna talk about what each of these things is for. I'm just kind of giving you a, a scope of the different things that we were uh, we were grabbing. Uh, but uh, again, Hoople's cat does a much better job of deep diving in on this. Uh, we have barium sulfate. That was another thing that was recommended. Um, we have Tums, and I believe Tums are here for their calcium compound, calcium carbonate, uh, so which is what is in here, and that can be uh, helpful for removing certain types of radiation from the body. We also have cal calcium phosphate. Uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, material, I think it's for um, uh, like stomach acid reflux, and I forget whether this was some of the things in here are antidotes to the side effects of some of the uh, of some of the medicines. So you, you would take one of these medicines, but then it gives you other side effects that you don't want. So some of these are to kind of counterbalance those. Um, that, you know, that's the the the. That's a tricky balancing act whenever you get into like a lot of medications is that you know you have medications to counteract the side effects of other medications apple pectin is one that is not under that category apple pectin can bond with radioactive materials in your body and help to pass them through um, we've got a lot of apple pectin more uh, potassium iodide and uh, more more pectin in that. We also have some Metamucil because constipation apparently is an issue with some of the things that we've got in here. So again, that's one of those things where you take the medicine, but then you have to take the medicine to uh, relieve the symptoms caused by the medicine. We're gonna put this back and we've got some more things over here on the shelf. You definitely wanna make sure that you hear about. Next bin here looks like, it's kind of a mixed bin. I remember I, I said that we just had lots of different uh, you know, backup options for things. Duct tape is a solution for all sorts of different problems. You need to seal something up. We've got a couple of rolls of duct tape. Uh, if we were going to be in here for a couple of weeks, uh, you probably can't hold it, if you know what I mean, for two weeks straight. So what we've got is this bucket with toilet seat on the top. And what goes inside of this are these bags. So these are bags actually specifically for, uh, you know, doing this kind of thing. It's not for a fallout shelter per se, but like for people who are out boating, like going fishing for the day, you know, you can't just put your butt over the side of the, the, side of the boat and poop into the water. I guess this is the preferred method for people. So we've got toilet bags that go inside of the bucket and you would uh, close those up. We've got plenty of uh, zip ties, or not zip ties, uh, twist ties for that. We also, also have zip ties. Uh, that's kind of a just in case kind of thing. If we need to rig something up or whatever, you know, uh, these are types of things that 
help you with a variety of solutions to different problems. We've got a couple of uh, electrically run heaters. I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this is, a, this is a fallout shelter, but it's also a root cellar. And in the winter especially, it can be it's refrigerator temperatures in here. Now you get a couple of people in here and they're living in here for a while. The body heat is going to help to warm the place up, but let's say it's not enough. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe it's too much. I'm not sure. I want to have the flexibility to kind of control the temperature a little bit. And if we have electrical uh, access, we could use those heaters to add a little bit of heat to the environment. More bags, because bags are always useful. We got some trash bags, and this is just some plastic sheeting. Uh, plastic sheeting could be used in this entry area. We could potentially tape some of that up if we're uh, you know, concerned about dust you know, contaminating from the outside, getting in here, you don't want to be tracking dust into the environment. Having some plastic sheeting up could help to control that kind of thing, especially if someone needed to go out and it wasn't necessarily soon enough to go out where it's safe, but you know, there's some emergency and you know, it'd be me uh, you know, going out to do something. Uh, I, I would want to put up the plastic sheeting so when I'm opening and closing that door, there's not dust that's kind of coming in here and settling in. So we can have kind of like an airlock to some degree there. So these are all things that we can use to create, um, create devices, create, uh, you know, things for different applications, you know, as they may arise that we can't foresee at the moment. Next thing I want to pull out, this one's a little bit of a fun one. This is a uh, notebook, sketchbooks, crayons, pens, pencils, and markers. It's nice to label everything on the outside. This is just, this is stuff for, you know, if you're stuck in here and you're bored, you know, you can, you can write, you could draw, you can, you know, do all sorts of different things with your family. If you have crayons and pencils, make sure you have a sharpener, uh, you know, or a knife or something like that. Just got all sorts of uh, art supplies in here. And that may seem like kind of a silly thing, but after like 72 hours with your family and you don't have any kind of games or anything like that, you know, board games would be another nice thing. Um, you know, I think you'd start realizing the, uh, <laughs> the benefits of having something like this. Next, back to more like uh, life critical kinds of stuff. Uh, we've got some cough drops, you know, who knows, it might be a situation where somebody, uh, you know, has a cough or, um, you know, isn't feeling well. It's good to have that. Um, we, we have a, a female amongst us. Uh, and having something in case somebody gets a yeast infection, especially with uh, you know the, the toilet and bathing situation being a little different, this would be kind of important. You wouldn't want to do without that. Uh, this is for athlete's foot. I, I sometimes will get athlete's foot, and this would be for me. It can drive me crazy, uh, you know, if I would, wasn't able to treat that. We've got Q-tips in here. We've got bandages in here. You know, if somebody gets a cut, uh, which would probably be me, you know, tinkering with wires. Uh, for bathing, we've got some cloths. Uh, for, for drying up. We've got some rags and these uh, can be used for you know any number of things uh, you, know, you know wiping up whatever you know it just it's good to have lots and lots of rags. We've got some uh, from some 3M uh, N95 uh, respirator masks and that would be something like if one of us had to go out you'd want to be wearing a respirator. Now we have some better ones that we're going to be uh, showing in a little bit but you know it's, it's just a good thing to have. We have two boxes of those so 40 in total. Uh, we've got ibuprofen uh, you know for who knows what, uh, you know, I, I usually personally try to stay away from those types of medicines whenever I can, but you know, who knows, we've got different uh, vitamins, uh, there's some um, cold uh, syrup if somebody was not feeling well, I think yeah, the rest of this is all just personal vitamins that, vitamins that we tend to take, and again, that would be even more important if you're, you know, stuck in an environment like this, because you know, you're not maybe having the same kind of access to fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, these canned fruits here are not the same as having like a fresh apple <laughs> off the tree. So having, uh, making sure you have the, the vitamins going into your body, that would be a really important uh, um, you know, thing to have for your, for your health and your well-being. We got some more boxes here. This one regards, uh, again, like the female among us. Uh, we've got um, uh, tampons and uh, uh, there's a, a menstrual cup. Uh, we've got uh, also hygiene stuff. Here's some soap. Dental rinse in here, uh, toothbrushes and floss, um, more medicines, uh, uh, things like uh, for rashes and things of that nature. Again, like if, if hygiene isn't uh, you know at its uh, at its peak while we're in here, you know you can deal with that. Uh, normally uh, for you know uh, female hygiene stuff, we use a lot of reusable things here. Um, you know, uh, well the menstrual cup and. Uh, reusable um, uh, maxi pads, but we've got a lot of disposable ones because you know we, it, it's going to be difficult to wash things in here if we were to be stuck in here. Okay, what else do we got? Here's some electronic stuff. So these are all different electronics. We've got uh, coaxial cable for running our radios. A lot of the uh, electronic stuff is in the Faraday bucket that I showed you earlier, but these are for uh, running it. We've got electrical wiring, power strips for you know who knows what might be the situation. 
Um, we've got manuals for the different radios. We've got a station guide for um, uh, different shortwave radio stations for all over the planet. You know, so it might make it easier to try to tune into something. And in this, this is a little Faraday metal lunchbox, which is all taped up, which I'm not gonna open up. There are, what does it say? Two, yeah, there's two Geiger counters in here, plus batteries for them. And we also have battery chargers in the Faraday box, so we can recharge the batteries for these. And we have two Geiger counters because it's a critical device. If you don't have a Geiger counter, you are blind to the danger. So it's really important to have that. And we have two different types, one that is more sensitive to low level radiation and one that is uh, more sensitive to like, oh my God, this is like, you know, killer radiation. So we can kind of use both of them depending on what the situation is outside. Uh, the last thing that we've got in here is a, uh, a bag full of different maps. These are all road maps. Now, why do I have that? We're gonna like go take a road trip right in here. Now, the reason we have it is let's say we're listening to the radio and on the radio, they're talking about where there was a, a detonation and where there is fallout. And they'll probably be talking about like the, the wind direction and everything. Wouldn't it be nice to have a map to kind of plot that out on so you could kind of start developing a sense of where are the problem areas around you. If, I mean, if for no other reason, it just gives you something to do. But also once you emerge, you'll want to know like, is the area that I'm in, are we in an area that is safe? Are we in an area that you know isn't safe? If we're gonna evacuate from this area, which direction do we wanna go in? You know, you, you, if your evacuation route, you wanna go from here to here, but then you find out that there was a big cloud of radiation that blanketed this area, you're not gonna to wanna to do a straight shot from A to B. You're gonna to wanna to like generate some other course. So having the maps in there will allow us to kind of plot things out, know where things are, so that when we inevitably are able to leave and we're starting to make our next plans, we'll you know, have some information to make those plans off of. So that is our electronics. Uh, we got some more things in here. We've got coveralls. I'm not gonna pull those down. Those are just full body coveralls. I think there's like 11 in there. And that is a, for a situation where you know, again, I need to go out for some emergency reason and I, I'm not going to want to wear the clothes that I have in here out and then bring those clothes back. What I would do is, I mean, strip down to, I guess, just to my underwear, put on the, on the coveralls, go out and do what I need to do. And then on my way back, drop the coveralls outside, leave them outside the door because they're going to be covered in uh, radioactive dust, then come back in. And, uh, you know, if I've got 11 coveralls, that gives me 11 trips out. And I would hope I wouldn't have to do anywhere near that number of trips out. I probably wouldn't survive it if it was up to 11. All right, we've got a box named Games, and I'm a little curious what, what the heck was in here. Okay, yeah, so there are uh, card games, Man Mancala, a, a game of checkers. Ooh, here's, here's a classic, uh, the Bug Out card game. This is uh, designed by myself. Uh, it's a, a prepping game uh, designed by Praxis Prepper uh, that I designed a couple years ago. I did all the artwork on the cards and it's a fun way of um, kind of uh, playing a game that involves the idea of prepping and preps and preparedness uh, that works with your whole family. It's not like scary stuff. It's more about like, you know, you're camping and this, you know, you, you sprain an ankle and how do you deal with that and what kind of um, uh, sort of preps would you need to deal with that. It's like a very family friendly game and I guess it's turned into an advertisement, but uh, I was really proud of it. I was happy to have done it and I just haven't pushed it here on my channel because I'm not like a sales guy, but uh, it'd be nice to, for more people to get this game because uh, I thought I did a really nice job of it. But whatever games you guys like, whether it is, uh, you know, Bug Out by Praxis Prepper or whatever, it'd be good to have some of those in your, um, uh, your fallout shelter as well. And if you want to have redundancy, uh, not like bring your regular games in there so you can like, uh, you know, because you don't want to come out to your fallout shelter every time you want to get a game. You know, go to like a, a, like a Salvation Army or, um, you know, a th some kind of a thrift store and you can, you can get old games for like, you know, just a couple dollars. All right, games go back on the shelf. We've got paper towels, we've got toilet paper. Now, I, normally we use a bidet here and I love my bidet. I got my bidet to save water and be like earth friendly and everything, but now it's like a luxury. In fact, the, the, one of the biggest things I miss when I'm camping is the bidet. Uh, and I'll, I'll miss it if we're stuck in here for two weeks, but we're, you know, we don't have a portable bidet. Maybe we'll, maybe, maybe we'll think about getting one. This, well, these are shower bags. They're gigantic bags that uh, you can put your whole body in. And we got one of these rigged up and it's actually tucked back there where it can be kind of hung up around you here and it kind of clicks on, on these little uh, 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 loops uh, here. And we've actually got a, uh, a shower curtain that comes across here so you can get privacy back on this area. And uh, you know, people can can bathe over in this area and we'll catch the water and then dump it down the drain. We have a sink over here for getting rid of that stuff, but we've got some extra bags in case our primary shower uh, might leak. And I bought a bunch of them. So I figured, well, where else am I going to leave? My might as well leave them in here. 
This is kind of interesting. Let me get these out of here. The next thing's kind of heavy. It feels like it's all lead because it is. This is a uh, lead clothing. Can the table take this? Okay. I over-engineered the table. This is lead clothing. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you wear if you're getting an x-ray. And it's, you know, dentist office material. I'm not gonna pull all of it out, but it's just, just uh, like a, we've got a skirt and a whole, um, uh, you know, chest covering, and there's a lead hat in there. And I even went to the, uh, I'm not gonna pull it out. I've got a box and inside the box, there is a lead, uh, uh, lead sheeting. It's like, uh, I think a 16th of an inch thick. And with that, you could take and, you know, you could make an extra layer of helmet for yourself. And um, we wanna have options. Again, I'm in, I'd be the guy, if someone's gonna leave out of here, you know, you want to, uh, you, know, you want to have some kind of protection when you go out because the, the, the more shielding you have on yourself, the less damage you're going to have if you need to be out in that environment. So we've got that stuff if we need it. And it's really heavy. It's a little on the expensive side too. I would just throw that out there. I mean, I, I did it because I wouldn't want to be in a situation where I needed it and didn't have it, but uh, it, it was definitely an investment. All right, uh, I'm not gonna pull the other ones out because they're a little bit hard to get to, but I'm gonna tell you what we got. We've got a box and it has respirators with CBRN filters. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned I had like those little respirators, but these are like full face respirators with a shield and a special uh, respirator cartridge, which is called CBRN, which is for chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear? I forget exactly what all the letters stand for, but it's good for a radiological emergency. And um, you know, if we were, gonna need to leave and remember i mentioned it's like we're here we want to get here and there's like an area we you know may not have an option to drive around that area if we're uh, you know we're going to be going somewhere so having those uh, materials in here we could take them with us if we need to evacuate um you know let's maybe we're in here and the, you know the, the space gets compromised we have to leave for some reason it's just it's important not so we're not uh, breathing that stuff into our bodies the other thing i have in there is uv filter uh, glasses because uh you know in a nuclear war scenario uh, a lot of the upper atmosphere couldn't be irradiated and uh that can destroy its ability to block ultraviolet light coming down that's invisible uh you wouldn't even necessarily know that it's there uh, but uh, that can you know, really damage your eyes and your skin for that matter, but certainly your eyes. So there are glasses that completely filter out ultraviolet light. So we could go out in that environment and not have to worry about, about going blind. Uh, the last box I have here on this shelf is a toolbox, you know, like basic stuff, boring stuff, you know, wrench, pliers, screwdriver, things like that. If I need to get into a little electrical outlet, uh, it, you know, it makes all the difference. And beyond that, I think we've covered everything. We've got a sink over here. The sink drains to outside. We got the toilet that I mentioned earlier. And uh, the last thing uh, that I want to mention that I did not mention when I was over by the bed area is we have some clothes because, uh, you know, you want to be changing your clothes. I mean, talk about like a, a hygiene issue if you're just going to wear the same clothes for two weeks straight. We've got extra clothes and it was a great opportunity to kind of clean out closets with clothes that people really weren't wearing anyway because, you know, they don't like them. Uh, this was a great place to bring them. We just put them up in boxes brought them out here it opened up some space in the closet and you know we've got some clothes so it's not a situation where like people are like trying to figure out what to wear before they go into the fallout shelter we know everything's there and the last thing which relates to what i just mentioned there about like delays and people like wondering what to do is we have an action list uh about what we need to do come out, to come out here because it's not just a simple situation where we all just come out here and close ourselves up there's things in the house we need to like there's windows we want to close there's vents we want to turn off we want all the power from the entire house's solar our electric system to be maximized in here so we want to be shutting off the majority of the devices out in the rest of the house we don't need to be heating up hot water for the shower in there uh, you know using electricity or or the pumps for this uh, the solar hot water system because we're not going to benefit from any of that so they, there's all sorts of breakers we need to uh, turn off there are windows we want to close there's blinds we want to close because uh, the more you have sunlight coming into the house you more you warm up the air inside of a house so the more you get that stack effect where the hot air rises at the top and leaks through all the little inevitable holes around the you know, window cracks. As the hot air leaves your house, that creates a kind of a suction on the bottom and it pulls things in. 
uh, you know, air in from the bottom, and that is just going to pull more and more radioactive dust into your house. So, you know, there's all sorts of things that you're going to want to do in terms of last-minute things. Not, uh, not to mention if you have pets. You know, my boy has a fish, and we've got a two-week feeder. He has to make sure he puts into the fish tank. He's got a hamster, which would come out here with us. There's things we want to do. We've got chickens. You know, I, I don't know what their chances are would be honestly, but we could at least get them into their coop, get them food, get them water. Uh, you know, wish them good luck. You know, there's a list of things that we would want to do. And that's a really critical part of the whole thing is just having that list, having an action list for everybody uh, and uh, going through it at least once just to make sure that everything syncs. Like, for example, I mentioned that one of my things is to turn off breakers. Now, let's say this happens in the middle of the night and my things turn off breakers and other people's thing is to like, you know, grab certain items from the house. Well, what if I turned off the breakers first and then there's lights all over the house that won't work and people are trying to get their stuff, but the lights don't work because, you know, Praxis already turned off breakers. It's good to just kind of do a run through first to make sure people aren't tripping over each other. Keep keep people uh, you know in different areas, um, or try to make it so people uh, are in a similar area if there's a task where somebody might need some help with something. So it's good uh, it's a good idea to kind of run through all that stuff. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know I've done videos like this in the past, uh, but uh, you know the way it is with YouTube is you know. It, if a video is not new, uh, nobody tends to even be aware that it's there. I know a lot of new uh, subs have come here to my channel, um, and you know, the, you know, you guys would have no idea that I've done a lot of videos like this in the past. I'll put a link down in the description below to some of the other videos that I've done on this uh, topic. We did a whole test in here. We we're in here. We did a live stream where we were testing all the systems. Uh, I've got a lot of material on it, so I'll put that uh, down uh, the uh, description below if you want to know more about that. And I even have a video that is a a Lego themed version of how to build a bug out, uh, not a bug out, a fallout location in your basement. We use Legos to kind of build the whole thing together. If you don't, you know, have the means or the inclination to build a whole root cellar like we, what we've done here, but you do have a basement, there are some fairly simple things you can do to take that situation and, you know, make it pretty functional as a fallout shelter. So all those links are down below. But overall, I hope you find this helpful. And even more than that, I hope none of us ever have to use any of these skills. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.